Hey everyone, Ro Gould here, and today I am absolutely thrilled to be bringing another interview here to the channel, and we are joined today by the wonderful Thomas Parrott, who, if you are unaware, is the author of the latest series of Division novels, also known as the Operation Crossroads series that started with The Division Recruited, which released earlier this year, and the latest entry, The Division Compromised, is set to release uh, first in ebook formats in just about three weeks on December 6th followed by a paperback release on December 20th. And you can find the links for both the Amazon listing for that, as well as my non-spoiler review of the book in the description down below. Tom, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for giving me and all of us your time. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. And hopefully, you know, people can uh, learn more about you, more about the books. I think it'll be a great time. Um in general, we're going to do start off with just some like general questions. I think we'll dive into recruited a little bit, and I will give a spoiler warning if anybody has not yet uh, read that. You should. And uh, then, yeah, what are you waiting we'll for? Talk about compromised. Go. Yeah, Go read it right now, right now. Before, yeah, pause, read, pause, come back. We'll be here, and then go read recruited. Exactly. Um, so let's just get into it, and you might kind of roll your eyes at this first one, but <laughs> just to just to set the tone, get a sense of who you are. I'm sure you've been asked a million times, but I was curious if you would be able to tell us at all kind of what got you into uh, writing originally. Was it something that you always kind of knew you wanted to do? Was it something you discovered along the way? What was kind of the, the journey there? Um, you know, actually, I have not been asked that a lot. Uh, so really? Yeah. Well, I think people avoid it because they think it's obvious. Well, um, there we go. I'm too. Obvious. There you go. You're you are you're doing great. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I you see you've caught me off guard. Um, actually, getting into writing, I think I, I think I always knew I loved writing. Um, but it's funny. Uh, I, there is a phenomenon in the community of those who want to write books, where people kind of talk about writing and never actually do it and um i was one of those people yeah. for a very long time i considered myself a writer i would write like the first chapter of stuff and then freeze um and just rewrite that first chapter over and over and over again until i got frustrated and threw it away yeah um but fun fact uh yeah it wasn't until i was like 28 27 that um i went to a convention and i went to a um a panel and this guy said something that just really stuck with me he said uh if all you're if you're worrying about what you're gonna do with the writing you're wasting time yeah um he was like, write and then figure out what you're going to do. Like, if if you haven't written a book yet and you're thinking about publishing, <laughs> no one has ever published um, a book that's not written. Right. So, like, well, what are you doing? Um, and that, for some reason, that just really fired my neurons. So I went home and, like, no joke, I was a changed man. And I wrote <laughs> a whole novel um, in my off time from work after that. And then I entered uh, some open submissions and I sold my first short story eventually. And that led in zigs and zags to here where I am on bookshelves, which is very weird. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's absolutely true, though. Like if you don't while you're writing, if you're not actually focusing on the story, who's going to want to publish it at the end? You know, right. Um, and I know that exact feeling you're talking about with the writing of the first chapter. I also I mean. Don't know if I would call myself a writer, but I've always really enjoyed doing it even when I was younger. But I'm the same way where like get a little bit into it. I, I very much like to write the whole thing in my head and then just kind of leave it there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have brilliant ideas. Yeah. <laughs> like that's that's what you hear a lot. Like I've got such a good idea for a novel. And I'm like, man, everybody's got an idea for a novel. Yeah. It's like, very true. My, my, my mailman <laughs> has an idea for, you know, like I'm not anything against mailmen. They're probably some of them are brilliant writers. I just mean like everybody, everybody. Yeah. Like 100%. people will stop you once you're a published writer and be like, let me tell you my great idea for a novel. So like, yeah, I'm like, sit down and do it. Yeah. I've got 20 of my own. I don't want <laughs> yours. Um, 
So, or like people, worse, people will be like, oh, I can't tell you my idea because you'll steal it. And I'm like, <laughs> man, I don't have time to write my own stuff. Like, what do you? <laughs> time more yeah. than motivation. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, uh, don't worry about it. Go write your book. That's um, great. But yeah, sorry. That was a really involved answer to your starter question. But like, yeah. No, that's fantastic. I mean, I, I you know, I kind of wanted to set that baseline since we're going to dive so deep into like division stuff. I think it's good to know kind of the the background there. So that's awesome. Um, so segueing into the division, since that's why I assume a lot of people are here listening. Um, yeah. let's talk a bit about the greater kind of crossroad series. That's the right thing to call it, right? The yes. operation crossroad series. Yeah. Yeah. So for anybody who hasn't heard of it or, you know, recruited the first book, can you kind of explain a bit what the whole deal is? Are they at all connected to the previous division books that came out? Is this canon within the division world? Where in the timeline is this supposed to be at kind of those general details? Sure. Absolutely. Um, let's sort of we'll, we'll do this sort of bullet point uh, at first. Yeah. Um, not connected to the previous novels, except that they share a universe. Obviously, like there's those little interactions, if you know what I mean, like sort of around the edges. Sure. But it's not you're not going to find out what happened to any of the characters from those. Yeah. Um, yet, I mean, not you know, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> stranger things have happened, but like nothing like that yet. Yeah. Um, as far as where it falls in the timeline. Oh, uh, as far as whether it's canon, yes, a hundred percent. You can get like that's not just me saying that. You can find where Yannick said it. You can find where Morton said it. You can find where Lauren said it. Yeah, yeah. Um, these are happening in the division world, um, and in fact, they're going to be informing the direction that the writing is taking. Yeah. Uh, for future content in the games, Which not is really that you cool. will have to have read in order to keep up, but like. It's going to make, it's going to, they're going to enrich each other. Yeah. Uh, they're going to go hand in hand as we go forward. Um, as far as what, where in the timeline, Recruited picks up sort of after the events of the base Division 2 game. Um, it's in September of that year. And um, it's. From there, and I mean, uh, <laughs> you get quickly into like, you know, very involved talking about, um, but like, yeah, you know, it, it, for, and then there uh, stuff happens in Recruited. <laughs> um, Certain plot. Yeah, there's plot. Uh, there's a whole book there. And then six months later, we're going to be picking up with Compromised, which is a big leap. In fact, Compromised, yeah. Recruited was the furthest <laughs> uh, in the timeline, and now Compromised is six months ahead of that. So, which is a big leap, yeah. Yeah, you might be catching some some hints and glimpses of very surprising things. Very surprising indeed. Well, I'm glad. I just wanted you know you to kind of lay that out. I think a lot of people know some of those details, but it's good to just set a set a baseline so we know Absolutely. what we're talking about. Um, so awesome. So then, also just talking kind of generally, I was curious: how do you, from your perspective, your point of view? Do you structure these books to cater more towards pre-existing fans or do you try and attract new audience members? How do you kind of balance between the two in franchise work? Because I imagine that there are very many different levels of division fans that might be listening. So are these books really for all of them or only if you're invested to a certain degree with the lore? What, what would you say about that? Uh, I think my answer is going to be a little bit boring um, in the sense that I'm going to say I do my best to balance perfectly. Yeah. Um, we, I mean, like, that's easy to say, right? Uh, like, of course, that's the goal, but it really is. Um, like, we want these books to be accessible to people. Um, if you see it on an airport bookshelf, we don't want you to pick it up and go, I have no idea what's going on and put it back. Yeah. Um, at the same time, I personally, as a writer, I, I, I am a fan of so many properties. I, I'm one of those big Lord nerds. Um, so I know the kind of people who pick these up and are like, no, I want to get the deep knowledge. I want to be a part of the deep magic here. Um, and I, I understand because I am one of those people. Sure. And so I do my best to make sure that there are rich nutrients there to nourish them. Um, I want you to, I want those people to be able to pick it up and go, and like maybe the maybe the person the casual fan will read it and not pick up on it, but I want the the the, the deep fan to pick it up and go, oh shit, did you see what he did there? Yeah. Um. That's that's what I'm aiming for. I was very uh, 
Aconites set the tone. They want each book to be accessible. They don't want you to be shut out reading Compromise because you haven't read Recruited. Sure. And I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to, I was not sure I would be up to that task. I mean, that is um, tough. Yeah. When you're yeah, doing a sequel. That's so. just me being honest is that I am, I, I have no illusions. I'm a perfect writer. It's always a learning process. I yeah. was a little nervous, but I tell you what, we just got in a review from somebody who started with Compromised and they loved it and they're going back to read Recruited now. So like, that's awesome. Yeah, like it seems like it's going really well. So if you are brand new, I'd say start wherever you want. If you're a deep fan, I would say read it and, you know, let me know how I did. Uh, yeah. I hope you find stuff there to enjoy. Well, that's cool that they were able to get someone with that point of view. I think that is important feedback. So it's cool that uh, that, that was able to get put forward. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, the Aconite's really great about stuff like that. Yeah. All right. Well, for everyone listening, that was about all of the non-spoiler stuff you're going to get. I think from here on out, be oh, warned no. for spoilers from <laughs> Recruited, which again came out like over six months ago, I think. So again, you can find it on Amazon. You can find it Barnes & Noble, wherever. You can probably find it. And if you don't want to be spoiled, if you want a full, fresh experience, which I recommend, I would say do that because we're going to get into spoilers a little bit. So I won't focus on it for too long because I've heard you answer this before, but I just, again, kind of want to set the, the stage for everybody. I he I recall hearing you explain how when you came onto this project in the beginning, the general storyline was already laid out. Is yes, that right? That is and, correct. And there was a different author who had to like step away. So was that mm -hmm. a weird experience? Had you encountered anything like that before? Because I know as a, I like to call myself a creative, the idea of like hardly getting any freedom in that regard might kind of be a bit frustrating. Uh, for starters, don't be self-deprecating. Um, <laughs> thank you. You thank guys you. do stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm being serious. The YouTube streamer content creator community you guys work. I mean, I, I know how hard y'all work. I've seen it. Um, and the stuff y'all make is often the lifeblood of the continued life of these games. And um, yeah, no, like you, you absolutely are a creative. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, plus, listen to that radio voice. We all know you've put in work on that. <laughs> it's gotten uh, better. It's gotten better. It's gotten, yeah, it's great. <laughs> um Okay, so as far as what it was like to come in on a project that someone else had started, for clarity's sake, I am incredibly grateful for the opportunity. I don't want anything else I say to come across as like, oh, I wish I hadn't had to do this. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Because um, it was great. It was, are you kidding? It was the first novel I was going to get to have published. Yeah. I was so excited. Um. But yeah, obviously there's a level of fear. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, the person who I was stepping in for, I'm not going to name their name because I don't know if it's public knowledge. They were an award-winning writer. Yeah, wow. And I was a nobody. I am a nobody. Uh, not anymore, you're not. Oh, we all you. love you. I appreciate that <laughs> more than you know. Um. And yeah, like that's like that's daunting. I'm sure you can imagine. It's not just filling in, it's filling in for somebody who like they had credits of stuff that I loved. Right. And it was like, oh, they had to go and you we need you to not only take over for them, but you have to pick up like where they left off. Right. And even if nobody else knows that, like that pressure is now on you. Yeah. yeah. Uh exactly. And I was um it was nerve wracking. Uh, it was, I wanted very much to live up to that. And to some extent, I feel that way about every tie in project. Um, because there's always, for me, there's always the pressure of like the fans. Not that I'm like scared of y'all. I mean, who isn't? Y'all are, there are elements of every fan base who are terrifying. Yeah. Um, but. Like I said, I'm a fan and I always want to create an experience that I would enjoy as a fan. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it was um, like they were like, here's characters and here's a plot line. Um, and just like, <laughs> go fill it luck. in. Yeah. Uh, and that was that was daunting. The characters, um, especially because typically, like when I've written stuff before, characters are so integral to your own personal 
experiences in life, your own inspirations. Yes. Like that's yeah. Uh no, yeah, like the here like that's the funny thing. I didn't create Myra. Yeah, that's um, crazy. But at this point, especially, Myra is my baby. Um, right, right. And to, to, again, giving Aconite mad credit, they picked me partly because they thought I would fit. It wasn't like they just pulled a name from a hat. <laughs> yeah. Um, Myra is ex-military. She was a desk job person in the military. Uh, she's in over her head. Um, she's a smart ass. Uh, and well, the smart ass, I think was me. I think that was just me. <laughs> Let's be real. I don't think that was in the notes. I'm pretty sure that was just me. Yeah. Um, but like everything else, like I share that background. Um, I am also ex-military and I had a desk job and uh, I would be in over my head in these circumstances. I didn't um, know that. That's cool. So like there was a certain level of hitting the ground running where that was concerned and that smoothed it a little bit. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, again, super involved answer to your straightforward question. But like, yeah, it, it nope. was. We love the detail. Love the it detail. was scary and exciting, and um, I, I I was shaking when I got the the email. Yeah. Um, and then I read the oh god when I read that bio for the last writer, I was like, they wrote what? <laughs> they wrote what? No, like I like I almost went back and I was like, uh, excuse me, I have to retract my um. I will be hiding in my closet. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I can only imagine that's just such a weird feeling. Cause like when I try and come up with a story for something, it's like, you want to be able to put in your own cool ideas and just to be like, Hey, this is what you're going to write. And that's kind of weird. Yeah, no. Well, that is actually a distinction I should make. What I got was not that developed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what I got was the pitch, sure. which if God, that's getting into like technical terms. Um, I got like three paragraphs, uh huh, which still sets the stage. But then yes, you, you but get yeah, to like, fill in a lot. Yeah, you know, there's a lot between three paragraphs and eighty thousand words. Yeah. Um, so like whole chunks of the book, the farm scene, a hundred percent me. I actually that is actually, and I'm not kidding. I was going to bring that up later. One of my favorite scenes, just like the setting of it, and then it, you know, it turns so darkly. I really like that. That whole segment was all me. That's cool. Um. But that's just like that as an example off the top of my head. And I use that because I know people, I've had people tell me they cried about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is so, gra maybe that's fucked up, but it's gratifying. Um, no, it's, yeah. Funny enough, they made me make it less dark. Really? Uh, it was worse than the first version. <laughs> wow. Um, so, yeah, uh, that, I guess that, I think I've answered, I think I've, I think I've tackled that. Yeah. I just wanted to be clear that like, it's not like I had like, you know, didn't have a gun chapters to your head to and follow. I had to bring yeah. it home. <laughs> like I, I yeah, like I I, I there is a everything all the every word in that book is a word I put there. Sure. Um it's absolutely like, your book. Yeah. But yeah. obviously, yeah, like the frame, like the I, I had a somebody had laid the foundation of the house and then I had to build it. Yeah, it's a good analogy. Yeah. The two parts of of recruited that I enjoyed the most was the farm part was really cool and also I do love all the characters, but I have to say, I think Brenda was probably my favorite character. Really liked her, her stoicism, her leadership. It was all really cool. Um, Brenda's my favorite, too. Really? Mm -hmm. I remember you did a poll at one point on Twitter where you asked uh, who, which of the three, you know, agents were people's favorite. And Brenda got the least votes. I was like, come on, man. But that's that's good to know. We're in the same camp. Um, um, yeah, well, Brenda is to me. Brenda's morally complicated. Yeah. Um, and I, I I think you could read it and not even notice that. Um, which is either to my credit or to my detriment. Well, she puts um, on such a such a face, you know. She's mask. so likable. Yeah. She's funny and she's caring and she's warm and she smiles a lot. And so you could not notice that Brenda is also calculating and manipulative and um will do whatever she thinks she has to do yeah to see a mission done when myra to the contrary is the more abrasive person she's a, again a smart ass she opens her mouth when she shouldn't um but she's the one who will go whoa this is fucked up what we're doing yeah 
um, and is thus more of the moral center. And Leo, again, more abrasive, kind of a dick even, but he has thresholds that he won't cross. For sure. And I think my favorite part is, um, this is going to be very spoilery. Uh, is hey, that okay? Pe- people have been warned, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, with the conversation Brenda and Leo have when they think Myra's unconscious Uh after the gas attack yeah, is one of my favorite things in the book because it's the moment when you realize Brenda does not actually care what happens to Myra. Right. And Leo does. And it seemed flipped the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That Leo's resistance and anger are actually about what he thinks is a civilian being dragged to hell. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, that's a little unfair to Brenda. She does care. It just won't stop her. Yeah, the mission is above. Yeah. The rest. Yeah. That so, um, that uh, gas attack in with St. Louis, right? Oh, uh, God. There's a gas attack in a, in a nowhere town. Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry. That one. And then the later one. Right. Or yeah. The, then there's the dirty the, bomb. The dirty bomb. And, which, yeah. They let me just fuck St. Louis. <laughs> which yeah. is still really funny to me because it's. It's not casual, but we never find out like who lived there or what was going on. <laughs> like, I just like to imagine that there's like you know the the protagonist of another story, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> like half the city just is fucked, and they're just like, "What the shit?" And everybody involved is either dead or gone yeah. within like thirty minutes, and they're just like, "Uh." <laughs> thanks assholes Ab- like, absolute terror just went through the yeah. city and moved out yeah yeah i thought um, that one was pretty dark um that was yeah i really love that yeah that was her reaction to the fact that it's a dirty bomb is my own reaction yeah. to that idea yeah so like yeah i loved that i loved being able to do that yeah and that they let me just abuse Destroy st louis. louis poor, poor st louis That's i'm sorry great. st louis you know, maybe in ten years we'll come back and we'll see the uh, the remnants of that. It's all connected. Uh, that's kind of my dream, and that's sort of my job too, is to lay these seeds for future stories. Not even mine. Right. Um, obviously, I laid the groundwork for my own stuff, but like this is a world. There's going to be more. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, like, can you imagine? Like, this is not me talking about something that's planned or has been discussed. <laughs> Or is even a whisper in the wind. But can you imagine how cool it would be to have like a DLC where you had to go help clean up St. Louis in the wake of that? Yeah. And you hear a line about oh, what happened, you know, months back or years back yeah. that caused it. Yeah. That would be rad. Absolutely. Uh, well, speaking of that level of kind of like detail, another point that I wanted to hit on was the usage of the the outcast faction from Division 2 in Recruited. I thought that their kind of accuracy... Uh, the the accuracy of their depiction and my ability to like pick out different archetypes of them from the game from your descriptions was like uncanny it was pretty crazy so i don't know if their inclusion was predetermined when you joined on but what kind of like research and preparation did you have to do to make them feel so accurate as well as you know all the other connective elements in the story uh i appreciate the question and what you said because that is that's a big deal for me. Um, yeah, I, I research like a lunatic. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if everybody does. You know, uh, writing is a solitary profession. Um, Indeed. And, and like, I don't get to like watch other people work very much. So maybe everybody does it, but like, I, um, I feel like I put in a lot of effort, and so it's always really nice to hear like, "Oh, wow, you really nailed this thing." Um, no, I could tell every time you were like, this person was running up. I was like, I know which one that is when the big guy in the armor came, you know, all of it. Yeah. Um, well, I wanted to strike a balance. I wanted it to be like, if you've played the game, you're like, oh, OK, I see what's happening. But I also didn't want it to be like, that is a Goomba. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is a video game all of a sudden because um, right. it's a more grounded take when you're sharing sure. the books. Right? For sure. Um, but I did, uh, well, I played the game for starters. Yeah. Um, under an assumed name, (laughs) uh, because I I don't want that smoke. Yeah. Um, I, I've already told you, yeah, like I, I, I've told people I'm bad. I'm not good 
at these games. Um, they let they, you enjoy the story to a degree, though, without getting too intense, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, no, but I mean, everybody's like, come do raids with us. And I'm like, <laughs> why do you want to have to carry me? That's a weird thing to want to do. You can just sit back and watch um, it all unfold. Yeah, uh, that, that was exactly how that would turn out. <laughs> um, I would curl up behind cover and scream the way people do in my book. <laughs> um, so I did that. I read wiki articles. I watched Let's Plays. Um Here's here's an example. This, this is this is a deep cut, right? Sure. There is a moment in the book where someone uses a sticky bomb. Yeah. Right. It's one moment. Um, again, because I, uh, because the books are a more grounded take. Yeah. I can't have people carrying around a hundred sticky bombs in their pockets. Um, <laughs> right. It doesn't. So they have to magically have, like, regenerate. Yeah, like that, and they don't get to stop off at you know sticky bombs are us um <laughs> so they have like what they have uh and and they have to be very sparing about its use but i tried to make it you know a big game changer when they use it yeah um and i watched this is not a joke for this one moment and this one word in the book i watched five hours of let's play to get the sound of the sticky bomb right wow dedication that's absurd i wouldn't do it again um <laughs> but that's how it you know feels so authentic absolutely yeah no like i was like what noise does it make when you fire one shockingly hard to find yeah uh <laughs> so that's that's it um i threw i did try to do fun stuff like um i went read through the lists of like enemy chatter yeah and i pulled from that for Different like things that they hear have. the bad guys say yeah um i tried to work it in so that it's you know organic but like again like if you're reading then you're a big fan of the games you maybe be like oh haha ha, i've heard them say that yeah um that kind of stuff so you know if it all came together then that is that is blessed and i am overjoyed it did absolutely and i mean you also to my understanding at least feel free to correct me you have resources like i know lauren is a big influence on the overall narrative in the games and the novels and stuff like you have people you can ask if you need those details and all that yes uh sorry I, yeah i don't want to minimize that at all uh i have a great group of people who i work with and they are very informative they've been very helpful i could have just asked someone what sound a sticky bomb makes <laughs> um you you chose the tough route. You wanted, you know, that adversity. No. Well, <laughs> maybe. No, I'm just dumb. Uh, that's the actual answer. No. Uh, at the time, well, see, here's the thing. Every time I involve someone else, that is like two days. Sure. Because I have to email them. They have to read the email. They have to take the time to answer me. And sometimes they have to check with someone else yeah and they have to email them and like i i didn't want to stop for two days over the noise a sticky bomb makes so instead i you know it's one of those things that doesn't make sense no matter how you slice it i should have just like come up with a sound and nobody would have given a shit i don't think um but here we are here we are well, like uh, I said, though, when it. somebody reads it and they can picture it he sounding the same way they've heard it in the game, I think it just adds that much more to the to the immersion. So, God, I to hope you. so. Thank you. Yeah. God, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that would be great if that's how that plays out. Um, that would that would that would validate everything. Yeah. Um, oh, also, you asked in passing um, whether the outcasts were the, the the involvement of the outcasts was predetermined. Oh, right. Yeah, um, yeah. That was a note, it, but it was like the outcasts attack the the refuge at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, like that. That was it. So they that got was, way more. Got. They got way yeah, more so page like, time. <laughs> yeah, like so, I was like, okay, well, you know, let me let me put some juice on it. Um, and then that. So yeah, like I I read yeah a lot of stuff um, to try to get them right. Yeah, Anyways, no, I think again, it yeah. ended up great. And it was cool that they, you know, as soon as people start reading and they see that that's from the game, they're like, oh, I know, I know the world that this is in. So it was cool indeed. Um, 
let's let's move on to compromised. I think I, I'm excited to talk about. It. I think a lot of people will be interested to hear about it since it's coming out so soon. First big question here in comparison, since we just talked about kind of the process leading up to you writing recruited, how much of compromised is your own story, your own ideas, et cetera? This one's me. Um, All you. Yeah. I mean, obviously I inherited bits and bits. As we've already discussed, I didn't create Myra. Right. Um, but Myra is now mine. Um, not in any legally binding sense. Actually, Myra <laughs> belongs to Ubisoft. But, uh, you know, I, she's my baby. I brought her to life. Um, nobody else can have her now. Yeah. Um, me and Lauren had a passing conversation where I was joking. It was a completely a joke about, like, Myra showing up in the games. Yeah. And uh, she was like, if that happened, I would consult you about her dialogue. Oh, that's pretty cool. And I think the point of that story is how cool Lauren is. Because um, <laughs> she doesn't have to. Sure. But like she is as dedicated in the other direction to getting it right. Yeah. Uh, to, to Myra feeling right. Right. And she knows that, that I'm the one who's created that, her feeling. Um, so, yeah, I, I just think that that's a, that, I, I think that that gives you in, maybe that's a fun insight into the back and forth of these things. No, absolutely. Um, and I think anybody who, enjoyed recruited hearing that compromised is all you should that should get you pretty excited um because i think it's going to be a pretty fun journey are you then able to give us a, a sort of general synopsis or idea of where we're picking up after the events of recruited uh, you said earlier it's six months later is there any other baseline details you can give sure um again like on the presumption that would the people who haven't read recruited have already left the room yeah or that they're okay with this um Myra got everyone got fucked up at the end of recruited. Right. Um, like badly injured. Um, except for except for Brenda. Well, no, actually, Brenda, but I take that I take that hundred percent. Everyone was hurt. Very, she was almost badly. the well, maybe not the most messed up, but pretty messed up too. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's sort of a, a misery Olympics at that point. Is <laughs> it better to be cooked or like uh, you know, lose a limb? Yeah. Um <laughs> And so we've had six months of healing, of training, of getting back on their feet. And what I have, okay, this is going to get very personal. Uh, um, so forgive me. And no, totally. very, very, uh, I have uh, delusions of profundity. So it's going to go that direction too. All right. Um, my compromise, I, I, I don't like violence as a human being. Yeah. That is that a bold statement? Um, I'm not a pacifist, but I think every time we hurt someone, there is a cost. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that cost has to be paid. I think that there are moments where, unfortunately, the world is not the one we would like to live in, and we do have to pick up the gun and fight the good fight. But I don't think that eliminates the cost. Sure. And compromised, as you might imagine from its name, part of its flow is the question of how much are these people giving up to fight what they think has to be fought. Yeah. Um, Myra is not coming through unscathed. She has no... She is not sacrosanct in this world. Um, she is suffering for her cause. Sure. And I think that that was what the way I compromise with myself is that I, I, I will write violence, but I will not glorify it. Yeah. I think I try to show all the parts of it, um, the the ugliness and the aftermath. Um, and so I don't think it's uh, an exaggeration to say that Myra has PTSD. Yeah. And she is wrestling with it. And I think um, it, you bring that worldview in is pretty important, at least for the greater franchise, because I think I mean, the whole idea of the division organization is a big question of morality in a lot of ways. So, you know, yes, I, it's the most important or not most interesting part of the universe to me mm -hmm. is, is I think I, I had a conversation about this on Twitter where I was like, look, extrajudicial agents are great story fodder they're a terrible fucking idea in the real world <laughs> yeah 
you don't want to live in a world where fucking Judge Dredd is walking down the street. You know what I mean? Like evident where... by all of the rogue agents in the you know in in the Lord. Exactly. Yeah. All who I really wanted to sell that a lot of them think they're on the side of the angels. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's not that they were like, ooh, hoo, hoo, it's time to twirl my mustache. Yeah. Like they think that the division is the one that's off the rails. Yeah. And whether they're wrong isn't as clean as yes or no. Um so and that's something that I, I I was really excited to tackle that. I think we get into it even more deeply in comp we touch on it in recruited. Mm -hmm. I think compromised really digs into it. Yeah. Um this question of like are they the good guys? But on top of that, can they afford to worry about it too much? Sure. Um so yeah, uh six months later. It's um, they've had time to heal the most obvious wounds, but the scars remain. I think that is that is how I would introduce someone to the book. That's great. I think that sets it up quite well. So uh, this is in the synopsis that's been out for a while. So I don't think I'm spoiling anything to say that we have a new location in this. And yes. I think um, ever since Division One came out, you know, in 2016, it established us with such a rich world in New York City. And I think the location of a Division project, whether it's a game, a novel, whatever, has always been kind of a hallmark of the franchise. So in Compromised, we get to see an entirely new region of the country in the Texan, Louisiana, South area. How did you decide on that? Did you decide on that? And what was kind of fun to explore within that that new setting? Um. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I think you're right. I think that the locations, location, 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 right? Um, yeah. It's 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 important. It sets the tone. Um, I know people are so in love with the New York and the snow. Yeah. Um, we've talked about that behind the scenes, about how much people love that, about how we can not copy and paste, but how do we make them fall in love in the same way with the new places that we're going? Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm subject to that um, too. I have an odd fascination with the setting of that first game. Yeah. I mean, it, it stayed with people. Yeah. Um, And I've talked to people about, like I said, behind the scenes about that a lot. I listen to y'all, whether y'all believe it or not. <laughs> um, Always there. listening. Um, yeah, I, I am. It's creepy, but I'm there. Um, one of the most fun things about Operation Crossroads has been that they were like, look, we want to find out what's going on in the rest of the country. Yeah. Like, we, we've seen New York, we've seen D.C. You're going to take us to new places. Yeah, that is a really cool So everything I've done has been that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's fun. This is going to be funny. Uh, so I started to write this one. And, and it's set along the Gulf Coast. It's Texas and Louisiana. And this arc along the the waterline, right? Yeah. And uh, Lauren is very particular, in a good way, about uh, real world mapping. Sure. Like I don't get to just like. It is not an exaggeration to say that I have seen the Google street view of every place I describe in these books. Wow. <laughs> There's a lot of detail. Though these are real places. Athena is a real place. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously they're evolved. They're taken into an alternate future. Yeah. But these are all real places and real streets and real everything. So I can go um, find the shade core out in the middle of a cornfield. Uh, if you did, <laughs> if you did, do you think you would come back, Rogue? I don't know. I don't know what's waiting down there at this point. Yeah. That's, don't go looking for things. All right. Um, <laughs> that you don't want to actually find. Right. What if it was there, Rogue? What if it was? I'd be shocked. What if I told you the truth? What if I really was? And no, I mean, I'm being an asshole. Uh, <laughs> but obviously, I did have to input syrups locations. You were correct. But the the... I can tell you this, the bunker where the shade core is located yeah. is mapped one for one off of an abandoned nuclear silo. That is cool. That is cool. So it is as real of a location as I could make it. 
Yeah. So here's the, here's the funny part. I wrote all this and then my editor, um, who was the lovely Gwendolyn, uh, she is a, a, a stellar human being and is the only reason these books actually happen because I'm a mess. <laughs> um, she was like, Tom, uh, could we have something other than swamp <laughs> as a terrain? Yeah. And I, <laughs> and I was like, you know, Gwen, um, I would love to. Uh, I'm actually tired of describing swamp. Um, but I want you to go look at the map. <laughs> and see what's down there. For the area. Yeah, because it is a sw- it, it's, it's all swamp, Gwen. Yeah. It's 100% <laughs> fucking swamp. And uh, it, it's, it's nasty. Um, so, like, I don't know what to tell you. Here we are. We live in this world. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like that's, but to to me that's that that's where the fun happens because then I get to have the characters be just as tired of it as I am. Like yeah. they're not having fun in these fucking swamps. Like they're just like, this is fucking awful. I don't want to do this anymore. Um, and it's cool because it's something that we haven't and, really ever seen before. So it's they're reacting to like a new environment that we haven't seen. Yeah. Well, I mean, I get to you know we got we were in. It was. I'll tell you one thing that was really fun. We have a character in this book who was in New York for the first wave. Yeah. Um, and I get to cut between New York in the at Christmas and uh, Houston in July. Very different. Because of his flashbacks. Yeah, yeah. and it, that was fun to do. Yeah, I um, bet. And also, I you know I. I hope that people enjoy the the callbacks to the. I, I don't think we've never been able to. I think this is the only time people have seen the first wave. It might be there. There might be something else, but like yeah, other than like you know um, they have the echoes in the game, but that's not really seeing it for yourself. It's a reconstruction. So I think yeah, as far as being in there for sure. Yeah, so like I, I think that's fun, right? Hundred um, percent. You get to see a first wave agent who did not go rogue. Yeah. Um. And what that was like for him. Uh, the answer being not great. It wasn't great. No. Um, yeah, he didn't. He didn't enjoy it. It wasn't fun. Well, um, let's let's talk about that then, because that kind of leads into my next question. I was going to ask about the new characters, and there is a new viewpoint character in this book. Uh, yes. Who you know, like you said, is there also ends up down there. So recruited was so centered around Myra and viewed from her kind of lens of. I use innocence in quotes, but kind of like the inexperience when it comes to the world of a division agent. So Mm -hmm. if you're, I was curious if you're able to, without spoiling, what kind of prompted you to add that new viewpoint into the mix? Yes. Recruited is a hundred percent Myra's story in a lot of ways. Um, But I think that's what was important about it was that like, it's right there in the title, right? Um, It's about Myra being recruited. Yeah. Uh, so obviously like Myra is our every man stand in. She is us. Sure. She is the audience and we're going to, she is going to learn this world and we will learn it through her eyes. Yeah. Because if I had had Brenda's viewpoint that takes this, she's not learning about the world. Right. Brenda is that world. Yep. Uh, same for Leo. Leo lives that life. He's, he's about that life. Um, in this one, compromised. Well, for one thing, I just knew I wasn't going to be able to cover everything uh, from Myra's point of view because I had plans for what would happen. Yeah, and Myra can't be in two places at once. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, another thing is again, look at the title, compromised, and while being recruited is such a personal experience a big part of seeing someone be broken is seeing it from the outside yeah we need to see myra not through her own eyes not filtered through her own perceptions we need to get a sense for whether myra is a reliable narrator sure and that's what the new viewpoint lets me do he obviously has his own story too yeah. Uh, hopefully that was satisfying. <laughs> Not just but, like, somebody that's following her and watching what's happening. <laughs> yeah. 
but uh, in the sense of Myra's story, it, I thought it was very important that we have that person on the outside so you can see Myra hurting, even when Myra won't admit that she's hurting. 100%. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, that's a really, you know, valid reason to to introduce that. That's cool. Also, you know, I just I like variety. Yeah. Well, and I mean, you know, as you get further into that... to a series, you can expand more, show more stuff. And I think that that helps with that for sure. Exactly. Um, plus, I mean, like, you know, he lets us go back in time. Yeah. Like I said, to the um, to New York, which Myra uh she doesn't know she doesn't know anything that happened back then yeah exactly um except for what she's read about like so yeah it's uh yeah it, it was the chance to do a lot more it was a chance to, to to develop these characters more um and i think it's also thematically important both in the sense that we start to see that while operation crossroads centered on myra and it, and it will stay that way for as long as I'm writing it. Myra will never be unimportant. Yeah. Uh, she's the heart of the story in a lot of ways. Um, that it is, it is not Myra's story. It's the story of Myra. That sounds like a very minor distinction, but I think it's an important one. No, that makes sense um, a lot. And some and, of yeah. learning. Yeah. And some, and some of learning about Myra is seeing her with that exterior viewpoint, because we are never, we are never what we think we are. And I mean that in the good and the bad. Yeah. Um, no one is objective about themselves, I don't think. Yeah, for not sure. Not really. Sometimes that outside view shows not only the flaws, but it shows the strengths in a different way. And like I said, I just thought that was very important. Yeah. So I hope that you enjoyed it. And I, you seem I to I think have. it's, yeah, I think it's going to bring, uh, well, yeah, I have read it, but <laughs> I will say, I think it <laughs> will bring a lot of new, like you said, opportunities to show different sides of stuff. And I think people, you know, I'll be curious to see how people react to it, but I think it was, it was a pretty cool inclusion. So kind of on that note, because uh, Recruited was the first book in this new series, because it was your first real exposure to the division. Are there any elements of this story or world that you feel like you're getting to lean more into, or you feel more confident pursuing now, either by circumstance of this being the second book or due to any feedback you may have gotten on the first one? Um, well, I, I got to come up with my own factions. Yeah. That's a, I mean, which but, is so another to similar it, like, to the location is another like big part of the division in a lot of ways. Yeah. Like you go to new places and there's new assholes with guns. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, well, I talked about this too on uh, Twitter to some extent, which follow me, um, Follow him. I'll leave a link would down you be below. So kind just to put, yeah, thank you. I, I would be grateful if you did that. Um, because I do talk about this stuff sometimes, not all the time, because that would get boring <laughs> for everyone. But um, I do discuss these things. And I talked about the fact at one point that um the the factions that we see in New York and DC are very primal in their motivation. Yeah. Like their their fear, their anger, their like they are emotional responses to a disaster. They're that knee jerk, oh god, the world's falling apart reaction, right? Right. And now that we are in the future of that of that world, it's not that there weren't those knee jerk responses. It's that sooner or later people start to retroactively justify them. They write in more elaborate narratives to their own stories because, again, this ties into that whole, like, who are we? Are we what we see or what we think we are or are we what others see? Yeah. And people start to write these more elaborate justifications. So the factions that they encounter in the Gulf Coast are more political animals. Yeah. Than the ones that we saw in um, – than you, than you met in The Division and Division 2. Because it's a different era um, in a lot of ways, being so far in the future. Yeah, and people are starting to think more, less about how am I going to survive the disaster and think more about what do I want the world to look like now. Right. Um, so that was really cool. That was something that I thought felt very comfortable doing. I really liked that. Um, I still had a couple things I wasn't allowed to touch. Some of the best toys in the toy box. <sighs> How dare they? Shh. Shh. 
Uh, but um, they let me get away with some startling things. Yeah. At the same time, uh, I, I'm not. I'm not going to spoil. I'm not. <laughs> But uh, there are things that I think have only been seen, like in passing, in the lore, yeah. that you're going to see in action. Um, and that was really cool and fun. That was something I felt more co- like I, I felt like I got to really come to grips with some of the aspects of the lore that were. It wasn't just me like interpreting what someone else had written. Right. It was like I get to like bring my own stamp to some things um you get to break break really some fun. ground and all that stuff yeah no i yeah, can uh, I, I can attest to that i think there are some really cool <laughs> <laughs> i think there's some really cool elements throughout that that show that both uh you know you are diving more into the the background and the lore of it but also that i think as much as recruited felt authentic and felt like the division world it feels like you're even more in it now you know well, yeah, I mean, there's once you've built that ground level, you get to you get to start layering on fun stuff, right? Like we're not we're not like I said, we still want it to be welcoming to new readers, but we also want to reach for things that um that are I, I like that's part of why I think this is going to be way more. I think if you are a big a big lore fan, if you are the big division fan, like the one who's like, oh, like I've collected all the echoes and everything, you know what I mean? Um, so if you're I've NGN. collected all the sound bites. Yeah. Uh NGN enjoyed this book. He so did. go read it. Uh <laughs> then, yeah, if you're NGN, then you get to read this book and be like, oh shit. Like he really did that. Like <laughs> yeah. he pulled that out of the toy box. And I thought that was really fun. It was yeah. The reactions to this are and gonna be got really to great to see. God, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Uh, I can't wait for that. Um, see, I'm trying really hard not to talk about it too much. Um, just go read the book, please, so I can talk <laughs> about it with people. Just, just go do it. Well, then we'll have to have you to back and, and talk like, hey. about the actual like spoiler dive. That'll be fun. Yes, I would love to have. Yeah, no, let's have um, let's meet again. You know, like in a couple months, and and talk about how everything went down because that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. Well, before we wrap towards the end here, I just have a few last questions that I think will be pretty fun to cover. Um, This one, this is a quote I got from your Twitter. All right. Oh, no. Oh, no. (laughs) This is what it said. I got to tell you all, I'm really hoping I get to do a third book and complete the trilogy because I have ideas. So my question is, is a trilogy kind of always what you've had in mind? Is compromise kind of set up to continue on to a third or did you kind of leave it more open ended in that regard? Uh... Every writer, not every writer, I think a lot of writers, like I, okay, I need to stop hiding behind other people. (laughs) I want to write series. Yeah. I want to write stories that build and that involve people and that pull you in and that you go, that feel richer every, the, the further you go on, because there are these links that we are weaving throughout all of it. So it is not surprising that I am excited at the idea of getting to continue this. And I think that there are elements of, I think Recruited was very self-contained. I think there are elements of compromised, which would be less satisfying if we don't see where they go. Yeah. Um, That being said, no one has promised anything. Uh, there, there is nothing in writing. Uh, no one has told me that I'm going to get to do it. So, like, that was just me being excited. That makes sense. And this business, there are no guarantees. Absolutely. And we're, it's we're not promising. Until you're anything. holding a trilogy, a third book in your hand, there is no trilogy. Makes sense. Well, very much so. I hope that comes to fruition. If everybody wants that to happen, you should go, you know, support the book and uh, make it happen. Um, Quick last questions here. One that's kind of, you know, more of a fun one. Now that you've been in the division world and community for a bit, is there anything that you have learned about or read from the lore that you think sounds compelling and you would enjoy kind of exploring on the page outside of the the Crossroads series and the characters that you brought to life there, if you were ever given the chance? Uh, (laughs) 
Um, if not, that's there fine. There are tons of things. I no, sorry. I, I this is me being very careful. There are tons of things I'd like to play with. Yeah. And um, hell, I I actually think what would be really cool here here's here's just a this is again not a promise. This is Tom talking about what he thinks would be cool. That's no, it. This is all hypothetical. I think an anthology would. Yeah. Yeah. I think an anthology of stories um, from a bunch of different authors about locations, not even just all over the States, all over the world in the way of the green poison. I think that would be badass. Yeah. 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 Um, Isn't that what the original, I haven't read it, but someone told me, isn't that what the original uh, world war Z book did? They told a bunch of short stories from like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, a world war Z, but (laughs) green poison would be in my opinion phenomenal that would be really cool um that's something that i can safely say i like if they offer if they were like <clears throat> we're doing this would you like to jump on board i would be like a oh, fuck yes because there's so uh, much freedom because nothing has been laid out anywhere else you know exact god can you imagine like oh man like how did europe handle it we've had these little like rumbles and hints maybe but like uh, what's going on in Africa? Like, how did China do? Uh, what's Hong Kong like after the green poison? Jesus Christ. Yeah. That'd be uh, really, really neat. Like these are, this would be, yeah, that'd be really cool. Right. Uh, so I'd love to do something like that. Um, and obviously there's the toys left in the toy box that I haven't been allowed to touch yet. <laughs> but I would like to go back and do that. I would like to, I would like to play with the fun toys. We'll see what but, gets I'm yeah, not going to get too in depth because it could happen, and if it I happens. say it, I could ruin it. True. So, well, we'll see what comes in the future. And you and me that... both, we're going to have to. Yeah, yeah, we're going <laughs> to. Exactly, we're going to cross our fingers and hope. Exactly. All right, Tom. Final question for you here. Recruited, uh, ended off, and this isn't a bad way at all, but like very swiftly, like our hearts were still racing. It was on a very powerful note. I felt. It was the culmination of a long kind of journey and exploration into a new territory. It was the climax of Myra's personal journey in many ways. How do you think, or how do you hope, people will feel after they turn that final page of Compromised? When people turn that final page of Compromised, I want them to go, that son of a bitch, I'm in. (laughs) I'll tell you. You know what I mean? The meme? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, that that that's what I want. That's uh, great. You son of a bitch, I'm in. That's what I want. And now people need to record their reactions and see if that's how they feel at the very end. Yes. Oh the... God, please come and tell me. <laughs> that would be really awesome. Dude. I am really excited for people to to dive into it and get to experience it for themselves because, uh, as I said, you can go check my spoiler free review. But I thought it was fantastic, and I think a lot of people are are going to love it. That is all the questions that I have for you. Uh, Tom, again, thank you so much for giving your time and being here. This is a ton of fun. Uh, thank you so much for having me. This has been great. Is I've there... enjoyed this a lot. So... I'm glad. I'm glad. Is there any last thing you want to say to the community at large, you know, before compromise drops in a few weeks? Uh, only thank you so much for making me feel so welcome for being so warm and supportive. Um, I, I, I am legitimately so grateful and I, I know that you know it's it times are hard times are tough uh inflation's wild the world is a crazy place um if you take your hard-earned income and buy my books like thank you from the bottom of my heart that is i i understand that that is not a meaningless decision and i am grateful for it yeah Wonderful. Well, I very much hope everyone listening enjoyed. Thank you all so much for doing so and for watching, and we will catch you next time. Bye-bye.